Okay, welcome everyone. I can see from the chat that there's people from just about everywhere in Australia, which is fantastic. I'm really happy to see that so many of you are here, um, obviously because you're really interested to help wildlife when they are in need. Um, so I'm very, very happy to do this for you guys. Um, firstly, I would like to acknowledge the first Australians on whose land and airwaves we are meeting today. For me in Canberra, it's the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, but we pay our collective respect to elders past, present and emerging to wherever you are. Um, so my name is Yolandi van Mark, and I am joined today by fellow Wombat conservationist, Adam. Hello. <clears throat> so the big question is, why are we doing this course? And one of the things that I've seen since coming to this country the most is roadkill and so many animals get um, hit by cars and I'm sure every single one of you have seen this happen and seen dead animals next to the side of the road and one of the biggest things when we do advocacy and awareness is to ask people to actually stop and check the pouches because even for me who really loves animals and who would always want to do rescue I've been doing rescuing since I was six years old but when I saw my first dead kangaroo or wombat next to the side of the road many, many years ago, it didn't cross my mind that there could be a live joey in the pouch. It just, it didn't register with me. So it's something that people need to start realizing. And then of course, once you know, it's the choice you have, whether you are going to stop or not. And I think a lot of people don't stop simply because they either don't know, and if they do know, they don't know what to do, or it's too scary, or it's um, confronting, or, you think, well, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to rescue it. I have no skills. I don't know what to do. So I'm hoping that this journey that I've been on and some of the experiences I have had that I can share with you will prepare you a little bit better. And if you do encounter an animal that you can more confidently um, decide what to do and how to do it and, you know, just maybe try and save one life, it could be um, a, a better outcome. Um, I'm going to share freely with you the lessons that I've learned over the years and the rescues that I've done and mistakes that I've made. Uh, it's a hard thing to do. I don't think a lot of people are willing to admit mistakes. Um, we all make mistakes. Um, every wildlife person I know have made mistakes. It's just a matter of whether you learn from them or not. And I have learned from them. And I guess for me, it's if if I can share the mistakes I've made with people and they can learn from that and maybe do a rescue and not make a mistake or not do, do something quite stupid, like some things I've done, you know, it could just help. So please, no judgment, but I'm happy to share some of my experiences with you. So obviously all of this footage is my own. It's rescues that I've done. Um, it's experiences that I've had and I'm more than happy to hear from you guys if you have any specific things you would like to share um, better ideas anything I'm more more than happy to learn from you too okay so um, just before we get started I just want to do a quick introduction I've already told you I'm Yolandi Wombat Rescue was founded in 2018 and we registered soon after. Um, we are now a small group of volunteers, de very dedicated to wombats. We work in the ACT and surrounding New South Wales. And for me, this has started primarily with rescue. Like I said, I've been doing rescue for different animals in different countries since I was really little. Um, but it's only after I came to Australia and started working with wombats that my rescue efforts, I guess, has sort of started to focus only on this species, because when when you look at them, there's just so much that they endure, so many things that they have to go through. And one of the biggest issues is, is roadkill, obviously, because not only do they get hit, but they also are left behind and they're injured and they're still alive. All these little ones in the pouches that do need to be rescued. And when a Joey or a Pinky is left in the pouch, it certainly is not a a pleasant ending for them. It's quite significantly severe, cruel. You know, they endure the elements, they endure ants and foxes and dogs and the sun and birds pecking out the eyes. So it's pretty horrible. So 
my mission is to always make sure that we can talk about the issues that they face and asking people to just take that extra 10 minutes um, add to your trip and maybe just stop and check for pouches. So what I wanted to do just in like a few minutes is talk about the legal framework and it's really not going to be as boring as it sounds. But as someone who drives on roads and you may encounter wildlife and you have to help them, you need to know what the legal framework says and what your um, responsibilities are. So I'm going to focus on New South Wales and ACT legislation only because that's where we operate. But I am aware that there's um, many of you that's in different states. And I would encourage you to find the legislation for your state and just go and have a read because it's really interesting and it talks about a lot of things, not just rescuing. So as a rescuer, which means you can be a member of the public, you do not have to be registered with a wildlife group. You don't have to have training. You can be basically anyone, absolutely anyone. We call them a member of the public. And you can take wildlife if they are sick or if they are injured. That's the only times you can do this. So we are not allowed to take any wildlife from, from the wild if they are uninjured or not sick. But once you encounter an animal and they are sick or injured, you can take them. But the law says you have to hand them over to, to someone. So we'll get to who the someone is in a minute. But in New South Wales, you have to hand over this animal in 24 hours. In an ACT, it's 48 hours. Personally, I think 48 hours is a little bit too long. And it doesn't mean you have 24 or 48 hours to play with this animal or to take them home or to take them to school or do show and tell or do anything like that. The reason is just because you might be traveling and it's rural and you're quite far away. So give, to give you time to travel to someone who can take over this animal. Um, so who do you need to hand this over to within 48 hours or 24 hours? So this could be a vet, it could be a wildlife group or a licensed wildlife carer. Um, the next level up from being a member of the public who just do a rescue is to become a carer. So under law, if you want to be a carer in New South Wales or in the ACT, you have to be licensed under a group. And these groups are usually um, divided into geographic locations. So specific geographic areas have specific groups. And once you've joined the group and you are a member, you need to do appropriate training, which is usually species specific. So you do your induction, you would do species specific training for say wombats in this case, and you would be assigned to a wombat coordinator. And from there on, you could become a carer. Um, and then I've just listed some of the legislation pieces for New South Wales and ACT, if you're interested to go and have a read. So it's not very onerous. It's just to make sure that if you do pick up an animal that you know that you have to hand them over. It's illegal for anyone to keep wildlife. If you pick up um, a wombat, jarry or pinky, you cannot keep them because they need very specialist care, very specialist food. And um, you, you, know, you need to be registered and they need very um, specific types of um, husbandry. So it's not anyone who can just keep them. Unfortunately, this happens a lot, but in their best interest, it's better for them to be handed over to a licensed person. All right, so when we start talking about working on the road, whether we check pouches or cut pouches or do a rescue, safety is always the most important thing that you have to think about. So when you, when you encounter anything, <clears throat> situational awareness means you, you are aware it's what time of day it is, it's night, it's, it's dark, or it could be daylight. What type of road? So you get rural roads with um, no shoulder. It's hard to pull over or there's heaps of space to pull over, but it's a very busy road like the King's Highway. Um, it's a single lane. It's a gravel road or it can be double lane. It could be heaps of traffic or no traffic. So each scenario will present differently and you have to assess all these um, different things, which is what situational awareness means. So the first thing to do when you encounter an animal on the road is to pull over safely somewhere. So you can see on this photo, obviously there are barriers. So don't stop in the middle of the road and put your hazards on because that is really dangerous. You need to find somewhere where you can pull over safely and get out of your car without impeding traffic. Um, when you get out of your car, 
you have to do an, an a distance risk assessment. And when I say risk assessment, you don't have to be scared. You don't need a, a pad with 200 questions that you have to fill out, but just use common sense. When you look at this animal in the middle of the road, but there's traffic coming from both sides nonstop, that's probably not something you will be, be, will be able to do. It's not, it's not safe to approach that animal. But if you can see that there's no traffic, it's quiet, and you would be able to get to this animal safely and pull them off the road, then that's something you could do. But you also look at your surroundings. You, again, would look at the time of day, you know, you, are there cars approaching, that sort of thing. Um, it's highly advisable that you have a high-vis um, vest in your car. Just keep it in your car, hang it over your seat so you have that available and PPE, which is basically um, gloves and a high-vis vest. Okay, so before anything, I know that this is, is sort of, it, it's going to be, we will be talking about a few different things, checking and cutting pouches. But before you check a pouch, there's a few rules that you need to be aware of. Of course, we've talked about safety and you have to be safe. Your safety is always first because um, there's no use if you get injured and there's less of us that can do this work. So always take care of yourself first. But in terms of pouch checking, um, a warm butt needs to be on their back. So especially when you're going to pull a warm butt off the road, they have to be on their back. And the reason for this is, when mum has a joey in the pouch and you pull her off the road on her tummy, you could actually injure the little one. So just make sure that she's on her back, pull her off the road. The next thing you would be doing before you even go to the pouch is check for signs of life on mum. You need to make sure she's dead or she's not dead because what you do next will be different whether she's alive or not. You also need to make sure whether this is a male or a female. Um, if you've determined that this is a female, then you go and she's she has deceased, then you can go and check if the pouch is in use or not. Um, once you check the pouch and there's nothing in there, but the teeth, you can see that there's a teeth that's in use, she's a lactating mother, that will tell you something. So for example, the, the teeth size would tell you the size of the, the pinky or the joey. Um, teats when they are not in use are about the size of a rice grain and there's two teats in there so you'll normally one teat would be small and one would be slightly longer and the longer the teat the bigger the pinky or a joey so if it's a really small teat say two centimeters but there's no pinky you could assume that the pinky was either thrown from the pouch on impact or it was taken by a predator if it's a really long teat it could be an at foot joey who would be hiding in the bushes probably, or would be still stashed in a burrow somewhere. So you would need to search. Either way, you would need to do a search to see if you can find them. So I just wanted to quickly show the difference between male and female in case you don't know. Um, males have testicles, more or less the same space you would expect testicles for any mammal. And for wombats, they are heart-shaped. And in the same spot, you would find a little pouch for a female, and it's just a little purse. So it's a, it's a small round opening, it's like a purse, and it closes with a muscle. And then when we talk about pinkies and joeys, uh, it's just about fur on unfurred. So if we say pinky, that's the really tiny ones, they don't have fur yet. And when they are a little bigger and they have fur, we call them joeys. So any marsupial young is called a joey. And one of the really interesting things that I've seen in the past few days is people asking when we do a rescue or they see a video and there's no blood saying it's fake because there's no amniotic fluid or there's, there's no umbilical cord. So a pouch is not a uterus. Um, marsupials are actually born internally and then they crawl through the cloaca up into the pouch. So a pouch is like a skin fold covering the two teats. There's nothing else in there other than two teats and the little one crawls in there and they live there for months until they're big enough to come out. So there's, there's no blood, there's no amniotic fluid, there's no umbilical cord. They are an independent animal from mum. They're only attached to the teat so that they can um, grow. And also, just a fun fact, 
for those who don't know, um, Wombat, um, the, the pouches are facing backwards because when mum digs her burrow and she digs the soil from front to back, she doesn't want the dirt to go into the pouch. So it's facing backwards so that the joey is safe and doesn't get in dirt in their eyes. So I'm going to show you a video and I want you to have a look at this and think about what am I doing wrong in this video? So all of you are correct. I, um, I have not moved this wombat off the road. It's a very quiet road, but I should still have done it. Because once I start taking the pouch, I'm so engrossed in what I'm doing. I'm not paying any attention. And there could have been a truck bearing down on me and not probably not seeing me. This was very early morning. There's one other mistake I'm making. I'm not wearing high -vis. In this next one, I do it better. And I will be showing you once the wombat is safely removed, how do you take the pouch? So obviously I've determined that this is a female, that she's deceased. And now I need to check the pouch. So a pouch is not very deep and you can use your fingers to just gently feel inside if you can feel anything. The pouch is quite small. So if there was anything in there, it would have been a small pinky. So what I found is an elongated teat. So you can see that teat is about two centimeters long, which tells me she had a pinky in there. So obviously the pinky is not in the pouch, so it would have been either taken by a predator or fell out when mum was hit by a car. So the search will start. The trauma that these animals experience during car strikes is significant. Um, not shown too many gruesome videos, but the, the things we see is, is pretty, pretty bad. And it's something you are going to encounter. You will encounter blood sometimes entrails, um, it, it's something that you mentally have to prepare yourself for. So in this case, another teeth about two centimeters long. So we started searching, there's no pinky in the pouch. So we started searching. So just to show you, this is where mum was hit and the pinky was thrown from her pouch. She was dragged another 50 meters further. Very obviously a boy, you can see the testicles. So I don't have to do any pouch check after I've checked him and all the others, we mark them with a cross with spray paint. I use um, water-based spray paint so it doesn't cause any harm to other animals. But we, we, the reason we do that is if we can't pull them safely uh, far away from the road um, and we have to leave them sort of on the side where they are still visible to cars, uh, we mark them because you don't want more people to stop if it's not necessary to check. So the X in the wildlife world means has been checked, it's okay, you don't have to stop. But obviously first prize would be to move this animal completely off the road because what's going to happen is predators will start um, feeding on the carcass and you get wedge tail eagles or uh, monitor lizards or any other sort of animal. And if you leave them in the road, these animals could get killed too. I have a quick look at the chat. So the paint that I'm using, I buy from Bunnings. Um, it's water-based spray paint. The, I've experimented with different colors. Shocking pink, I find, is the one that works the best. The ones that you don't see is green or blue. Red looks like blood, but it's also too dark. And white doesn't work. So anything that looks too natural will fade really quickly. But something that really stands out is either the orange fluoro or the pink fluoro. So just to, to understand, teat size is really important because that tells you if it's a longer teeth and you can find a burrow Sorry. nearby, there would most likely be a joey in the burrow waiting for mom to come back. 
This is the first rescue I've ever done where the pinky was still alive. So it's the most magical experience. And his name is Captain. Um, fantastic experience. I will never forget it. But I made quite a few mistakes. And it just shows you how hard it can be if you are not equipped. So in this, in this video, <clears throat> I didn't have scissors with me which now, of course, I have four, four or five pairs. It's just a very basic thing. If, if there's anything you need to have with you, it needs to be scissors. And we'll talk about the reason why, but this is a rescue I've done without scissors. And it turned out well in the end, it could have turned out really bad. Um, one of the key things that you need to remember when you remove a joey or a pinky out of the pouch is never, ever, ever pull them out. When you pull them, you could cause further injury if they've already been injured or you could injure them um, you just don't know if they when mum was hit by a car you don't know what sort of injuries they sustained they could have two broken legs they could have internal injuries or bleeding so you don't want to exacerbate any of that so you definitely do not pull them out but you'll find that if you try to do a rescue without scissors and you have to get them out of the pouch it's really difficult you would be able to get your hand in there the pouch is very tight. So by this time, mum is dead and the pouch opening would have relaxed, but the pouch itself is quite tight. There's not a lot of space in there. So even if you can get your hand in, you still can't get the little one out because remember they are scared and they will do anything not to come out. So they actually claw the inside of mum's pouch and claw their way back in. So what I, I knew I couldn't pull this one out so what I was trying to do is to push. So from the outside of mum's belly, I, I try to almost pop him out. And the other thing to remember, the pouch is extremely slippery and it would be very hard to get a, a grip on them. So you can see I just popped him out. Just to show you, this was Captain a couple of months later. He turned out perfectly. He was uninjured. So I've learned that lesson since then. I've carried big scissors with me. So now we get to cutting the pouch. We all know and have seen why it's so difficult to actually get a pinky or a joey out if you don't cut the pouch. And this is why we do it. Um, because you want to reduce the harm and you want to reduce the stress to them. You want to get them out as quickly as possible without any, any additional stress to them and making sure that you don't add to their injuries if they have injuries. And it's obviously so much better. If the pouch is cut, it's just basically lifting them out instead of doing all this that you've just seen so again there are pouch cutting rules your safety comes first you have to make sure that mum is dead this is the most key thing you know i can i can live by anything else but mum has to be dead because you do not want to cut into a wombat if she's not dead and if she's stiff and obviously dead that's one thing but if she's still warm and she's not stiff but unresponsive she could just be dazed she could be in a coma you just don't know so you have to make sure and i'll tell you in a second how we're going to do that when you do the cutting you will be using your hand as a barrier between the scissors and the joey or pinky inside to protect them to make sure that you don't actually um, hit them or cut them with your scissors you have to have proper scissors so uh, there's, a, there's a few. The one that I use that I like a lot is a material scissors. It's quite big. There's a video that I'll show you in a second where you will see it. Um, kitchen scissors work really well. And Bunnings has really nice um, big scissors. They're fairly expensive, but they're really good. So it has to be really strong scissors. And the reason for that is what you'll be cutting is a muscle. So it's, it's flexible. It's like material. And it can't be scissors that's not strong enough. So not small type scissors. It needs to be the really big ones. And like I said, you don't pull them out for risk of injury. Just a quick note. If you find that you can't do this, you can't do the cutting for whatever reason, you don't have scissors or you feel squeamish or you feel you can't do it or don't want to do it. It's there's, there's completely fine if you can't or don't want to do it. It's not easy. Um, what you can do is just load mum, the dead mombat, um, with the pinky still in the pouch, load the whole animal into the boot of your car and drive to the nearest vet or wildlife person. 
you don't have to rescue if you can't, but just take mum then somewhere and they can do it for you. So now, how to make sure that mum is dead? I'm going to ask Adam to explain to us what he's doing here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so as Yolandi said, um, sometimes it's obvious the animal is dead. So it's cold and it's stiff. Maybe it's been there for 24 hours or so. Um, other times it's not so obvious. So the body might still be warm and soft. Um, we're not vets. We don't carry stethoscopes. So uh, there, are, there are a couple of ways to tell if an animal's dead when it's sort of warm and soft. Um, one of them is to check for breathing. The other one is to check for heartbeat. But when you're out in the field and there's distractions and there's noise and it's the middle of the night, that's not all, always the most reliable way. So what we add on to that is this um, corneal reflex test, um, which is essentially poking the eye. Um, if, if the animal is alive or, and its brain is alive, there is a reflex that will close the eye, it'll blink. Um, so as in this case of this video, it doesn't, doesn't blink. Um, and so we can sort of re confidently say it's, it's dead. So now that you've made sure mum is dead and you're confident that when you cut the pouch, you are not going to hurt her, you can start cutting. So you will put your hand between the little one and the scissors and you just cut the material, the pouch like it's material. There will be very little blood because it's, um, it's a muscle. So in this case, the pinky has died. It was very difficult to see whether she actually had one in there because her tummy looked flat. But you can see it's a fairly sizable pinky that was in there, little girl. But you can see the teeth is around about five centimeters. So remember the pinky that you saw uh, on the road? That was a tiny pinky, roughly 200 grams, and that was about two centimeters. This pinky looks a bit bigger, I would say around maybe 500 grams, and the teeth is a little bit longer. So like I said, the longer the teeth, the bigger your pinky or joey will be. So those blue scissors are just material scissors that, you, that people use when they make clothing, and they are excellent. They're are really, strange? really good. No. Okay. So this is just cutting. It's like material. Yeah. So it's, there would be no blood. It's just a muscle. So now it becomes very easy to just scoop the little one out instead of trying and struggling. Unfortunately, this little boy has died, but it's still much easier to just get your hand in there and scoop them out. So he was badly injured when mum was, was hit. Yeah, there's no chance he would have survived. Makes me really sad. Poor little boy. Poor oh, Bobby. <laughs> I just want to add something. If you do cut or before you cut and you, you find that the pinky, specifically pinkies, joeys can let go of the teeth, but the pinkies are fused to the teeth because that's how they survive. And the question gets asked a lot when you do this rescue and they are fused to the teeth, what do you do? So when you are really experienced, you can wiggle and get the teeth out, but that's really, really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, because when you pull the teeth out of their mouth, you could actually cause a lot of damage inside their mouth. So it's advisable not to do that. So the next thing to do is to cut the teeth. And again, this would be very confronting to do. You have to be sure that mum is dead. And if mum is dead, she's not going to feel it. So you would need to cut the teeth to get the little one out and not harm them and, and try to pull the teeth off. And I think the question has always been, what if they swallow it? 
you just keep to cut the teeth as long as possible. So you cut at the base so that it, you don't cut a little stump, you know, cut the teeth as long as it is. Um, they're not going to swallow a, a four centimeter teeth. And once it, the milk production stops, they will spit the teeth out by themselves and it will, they will let go. I know people pin the teeth to pouches and things, but if you cut it long enough, they won't swallow it. So the next one is a jelly that was still alive. Mum had to be euthanized because she had severe mange. Um, but the little one was, was still alive, so we had to get him out. Again, my blue plus tea scissors. So he's alive. I need to be double sure that I'm not going to harm him in any way because the scissors are quite sharp. It's just a muscle. Very little blood. I just need to make sure that I don't cut the baby. There would be very little blood. I just need to make sure that I don't cut the baby. Once you get them out of the pouch, the first thing you do is get them into a makeshift pouch. If you have one available, just pop them in there. If you don't, Use a shirt, um, your any piece of clothing, pop them into your bra if you have to, if it's a really little one. But what they need is safety. So they need to be enclosed. They were in a really tight pouch, and this is how pinkies and joeys live. They are in a tight pouch. They don't want to be in the open. So they need to be enclosed in some sort of clothing or a blanket or anything that will keep them in the dark and will keep them safe and free of any noise and sound and anything else because what they are experiencing already is quite traumatic. Okay. It's usually um, natural material, so nothing synthetic. So polar fleece is one we like a lot, or cotton. Personally, I like polar fleece more because if they do pee in it, it doesn't get as cold as cotton does. Or flannelette. Flannelette is really um, a good one too. So now that you've rescued a little pinky or a joey, your immediate care and transport is important. Um, how to handle them is quite important. So I've added this just before I show you the photo. I've added the photo how to handle an adult. You most likely will not be doing this, but I'm just showing how to hold a wombat that's a bit bigger. So your um, your left arm will go across their belly so that their face is facing away from you. Otherwise, they will bite you. And your other your hand support their bum. So this is how you carry a wombat. And when they are in care, it's easy, like Gemma. When they are wild, they will be wriggling and trying to get away from you. So you have to hold really tightly, um, especially with your arm across their bodies to make sure that they don't wriggle out of your, your arms or turn around and bite you. And then a joey or a pinky, just get them into a pouch as soon as possible. Um, when you do transport, um, most important thing that they need is they need quiet. So no loud music in the car. Um, if you can keep dogs and kids and everyone quiet, that would be great. They need heat, especially a little one. So when they're bigger, they can thermoregulate and that's fine. Um, when it's to 42 degrees outside, um, you need to put your air conditioning on. But when it's a pinky and they don't have fur, they can't thermoregulate. So the best is your body temperature. That's what you need to give them. So don't worry about anything else. Just keep them in a little pouch, in a piece of material if you have to, and then on your body. That will give them the heat that they need until you can get to a vet or a wildlife carer. Um, and then obviously drive carefully, get to where you need to go. Don't go to any other places or don't do any sort of detours, just get to a vet or wildlife person and deliver them within the time frame that's um, in legislation. And just if you want to know, so 24 degrees is more or less okay. Um, obviously pinkies need more than that, but if you keep them next to your body, they would be a bit warmer. But for the adults who have uh, 24 degrees is the maximum. So what to keep in your car? your car rescue kit. My rescue kit is quite extensive. You don't have to have all of this. I like having all of this. Um, I have the space in my car to do it. You don't have to do all of this. Like I said, if you have nothing, absolutely nothing, you can still rescue. 
it will be a bit harder, but it's still possible. Um, the, the hardest rescue would be to get one out without scissors. But once you have them, you can use clothing. Um, you don't need a pouch if you don't have one. It's, it makes it so much easier if you do have a pouch, but you can do without. Um, and all the other things in there just makes it easier, but it's not, it's not a requirement. You don't have to feel like you can't do a pouch check if you don't have a rescue kit. And if, if I have to boil this down, if you don't want to have all of these things in your car, try to have your high-vis vest and gloves and scissors and one pouch with you. That's the most important things. But obviously I have a, a few other things as well. Um, go and get yourself a good pair of scissors and just keep that somewhere. Disposable gloves is something I like because it just helps you to, if you, if you have squeamishness, there's a little bit of a barrier between you and anything that might be a bit confronting. And it all, obviously also for disease and if the wombat is mange, that sort of thing, it just helps a bit, and especially if there's blood. Um, bandages, saline, heat back, that's great to have if you know how to use them. It's not necessary if you can get to a carer really quickly. Um, spray paint, like I said, we mark them to tell other carers that they have been marked. But if you can't do that, just try to move the animal away from the road so that it's not visible to other cars. Um, and then pouches and blankets. So you can have various blankets and towels and all sorts of things. Um, maybe you can sew if you can sew a pouch or two maybe a little bit larger though, rather than too small. And it's literally a bag. It's like a bag with one opening. And if you use flannelette or polar fleece, that should be fine. Um, I'm just looking at the question. So do vet rehabilitate doughies? They don't. So vets have a list of wildlife carers in their area and they would just call someone to say, come and get them. Um, they would do a vet check. And if it needs euthanized, they would do a euthanize. Emma's asking, how would we know if they are still attached to the teeth? So you've seen the teeth in the video and it would just be in the little one's mouth. So it's quite obvious to see they're still suckling. It's just the teeth goes into their mouth. Um, the, the smaller they are, the, the better they are fused to the teeth. So it's going to be really hard to remove the teeth from them if they're really little, which is why it's better to just cut the teeth. Um, is there a particular period in the year when Joey inside the pouch for wombats? No, they don't have a specific mating season. So any time of the year, you can find any size pinky or Joey. All right. So I have done for the first time, I've not done this before, a poll. I have a few questions and I would like you guys, if you want to participate, just to answer these questions and then I'll share the results with all of you. All right, I'm going to end the poll. So have you checked a wombat pouch before? 35% said yes, 65% no. Have you rescued a Joey Pinky before? Um, most of you said no, 85%. What is one item that you wish you had but didn't? Most said scissors. That's certainly the case for me too. Really interesting. Towel was the least. Torch, yeah. Do you feel more confident? 97% of you said yes. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, if the ones that said no or maybe want to have additional information or anything, videos, training, I'm more than happy to have a chat. Okay. So now, before we go to all these questions, I thought we can do a quick quiz. You can pop your answers in the chat. So question one, how long can a member of the public keep an injured animal before handing it over to a wildlife carer or a vet in the ACT? Okay. The answer is 48. B, 48 hours. So in New South Wales, it's 24 hours. In the ACT, it's 48. Question two, pinky means unfurred, furred, or sick with a fungus coloring it pink. Unfurred. Do I put it in? I don't know how to put it in. You all got that right. Well done. Yep. Question three, what pinky is born in the pouch? True or false? 
false. I can hear someone. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was you, Cheryl. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. There's always one in the class. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is, I think you all got it, it's false. A pinky is born internally, crawls out through the cloaca into the pouch where they live for a couple of months. Question four. Before dragging a wombat off the road, you need to turn them on their back. True or false? Some are saying true, some are saying false. The correct answer is true. You have to turn them on their back because you don't want to injure a little one in the pouch. Question five. If you cut the pouch while mum is still alive, she won't feel anything because it's just a muscle. Is that true or false? I'm happy to see that everyone said false. That is correct. Mum will definitely feel anything if she's still alive. Okay. I'm sorry about these marks on my screen. I have no idea where they're coming from. It is not me. I don't know what that is. My, my, my present screen looks okay. So if I go back to your questions, let's have a look. And I have to scroll through all the answers. Someone asked me about, gosh, this, there's so many questions. Okay. Queensland rules, I do not know. Um, you can Google, there would be definitely legislation to talk about Queensland and other states. I might include that in the next one. It would be interesting. Um, someone is saying, I use normal scissors, okay, for possums, but I wish I had a bigger, sharper one for a wombat pouch. Yes, that muscle is quite thick. You do need something that's really sharp and that's strong. A big, strong scissors is what you need. Um, Kylie is saying, I've lost my connection. How long can a pink or jerry last in a pouch once mom dies? This is actually a really good question. Um, it will depend on the season because if it's winter like now, it's minus eight degrees in Canberra sometimes at night, they're not going to last very long. And of course, um, when it's summer, 42 degrees outside, they won't last as well. And then you have the added issue of what time of day they killed. So you would prefer them to be mum to when this happens um, at night because in the morning the ants wake ants crawl all over mum and all over the pinky which is really painful and that will kill them but then also birds the birds do pick out their eyes and then you have predators so depending when this happens um, it's hard to guess um, not longer than two maybe three days if they are big enough and the elements were not too bad, not too hot or too cold. But normally they don't last more than 24 hours, I would say, if they're still alive and they have no injuries. Um, Jara asked a good question about the cat food. It's meat-based. Most macropods and wombats are herbivores. I completely agree with that. I got, I got it. I kept it with me just in case I've never actually used it. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I've, I've, they've said to me it's, it's, it's like a critical care sort of thing. Yes, it's meat-based, but it also helps them just get overshock. But I've not actually used it. Um, if anyone has more information about that, it would be really interesting to talk about that a little bit more. Um, what if mum is still alive? I knew this question was going to come up. It's a hard one. Um, it's going to depend what is wrong with mum. So if they have a broken back, it, it, she wouldn't be able to move. So she would be moving her paws and maybe her head, but she won't be able to get up and she would usually be on her back and just clawing in the air. When I found this, that this happened is I just loaded mum in, in my car and I drove to the nearest place where she could be um, humanely euthanized. So the option is... Put mum in the back of your car if she's still alive and you can do it. If she's still alive but not a broken back, so she's bleeding, she's thrashing around, there's nothing you can do. Um, if you're not 
someone who's licensed to euthanize, you would need to get someone to euthanize. The problem I have is the, the rescues that I do is usually so rural that there's no cell phone reception. But I am in the midst of farms. So your next option is to approach a farm and ask, is there someone with a license to, to shoot? And they could could they euthanize? If you can get reception, you can call a wildlife group and ask if they can send someone out. The problem is that New South Wales is, is huge. There are no rangers who do that. In the ACT, we're really lucky. We have wildlife rangers who can do the service and they can euthanize. So you have a few options. Unfortunately, it's really difficult and there will be instances where you can do nothing, um, which which will mess with your, you know, it's, it's hard. Leaving an animal that's injured and you can't do anything is really, really difficult. But there's not much we can do if you can't call someone and there's no one else that you can go and approach and of course you know for me if you if i drive alone as a woman i'm not necessarily wanting to go to a farm and in a strange area that i don't know anyone but that is an option just make sure that you're safe um what is in the tin can we've done that would this be similar for echidnas um, not sure what the question is. Some, what would be similar for echidnas? If you are able to unmute yourself who asked this question, ask, that would be good. I just said iPhone, so I don't know who that is. Right, how do you deal with the severely injured mum? But Joey's okay. So when mum is injured, do not take the Joey out. So the rule, like you've seen me taking, um, his name was Bullen, by the way, when we took him out, mum was euthanized, was euthanized first. It would be incredibly cruel and very stressful to try and take a Joey or a Pinky out of the pouch while mum is still alive. And he's safe in there. He's, he's in his pouch. Nothing could happen to him. So she needs to be euthanized first, and then you can do the rescue. Um, if there's size where pinkies are not viable, yes, absolutely. So um, I unfortunately don't have my photos with me where I can show you, but the size where pinkies are not viable is usually under 80 or 90 grams. So the ones that are over 80 grams, if it's with a very, very experienced carer, they can be pulled through, but anything less than that is not viable. Um, and it's about this small is not viable so when they fit more or less in your palm from like end to end that could be viable so when ears are not fused anymore eyes would still be closed um material of the pouch we've covered that what do you do with the bodies good question so i can't take them with me i have no way to take them we pull them off the road when it's a mangy wombat that's different you, i do not want to leave a mange wombat necessarily out there because that will just keep spreading um, what we do with mangy wombats is double bag them i carry horse feed bags with me because they're quite thick so i double bag a mangy wombat in a horse feed bag and duct tape around it and then we take it somewhere and the idea is to either bury them really deep or to burn to make sure that that mange doesn't spread so yes only ever one joey in the pouch The feed site would be if Joey was away in the burrow. So that would normally be about this long. That would be about 10 centimeters. So it's quite a long pouch. Because what, what happens is mum has this Joey at heel. So he's not in the pouch as much anymore. And the teeth, she would contract her pouch, but the teeth would hang like out of the pouch, out of the pouch opening. And Bob can just get to it. So that's quite a long teat, and that means it's a bigger Joey. And if it's not nearby, it's in the burrow somewhere. And then we talked about water-based paint. I think I've covered all the questions. If there's any additional questions that anyone had, please feel free to pop them in the chat. But it looks like we've done them all. So phone numbers for New South Wales and ACT. Um, in ICT, you can contact Wombat Rescue. That would be us. Um, I can give you my number.
Yeah. And it is a little bit different. So when you, if you are in Queen Bean or just outside of Canberra, that would be wild care. And if you are in this sort of east coast, that would be South Coast Rescue. And then obviously there's wires and they have very specific geographic areas. And I can, I have a map that I can post to you guys if you want. Um, yes, good question about kangaroo in the ACT. This is the second time this has been asked. So in the ACT, it's illegal to rehabilitate eastern grey kangaroos, unfortunately. Um, but there is an agreement with Wildcare that they can take 36 animals from the ACT. So if you do find a joey, contact Wildcare and they will tell you whether they can take this animal in or not. They do have a quota. So... Um, if the quota is reached, obviously, then the animal will be euthanized. Um, if you find a bar nearby, can you, how can you check that the baby is inside? Really good question. I put a wildlife camera up. So when I find a mum and there's a teat and I can know, I can see that she's lactating, um, I put a camera up. You can also stay a little to see if the, the bub will come out. You can put some sticks in front of the, the burrow and come back the next day to see if the sticks have been removed, which obviously could be another wombat too, so it's hard. A wildlife camera is, is probably the best because you need to see if someone actually comes out and if it's a little one or not. I don't see any other questions. Um, yeah, thank you, um, Dave. I'm glad that you found this valuable. Um, I think that brings us to the end and it's 6.01. So I just want to say thank you very much for um, joining, being here. I really appreciate it. I hope that you got something out of it and learned something, could use it. Next time when you, you do stop, maybe you have a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more confidence to check and do something. Any other questions? If you want to ask something, feel free to unmute. Yeah, Yolanda. Oh, sorry. Hi. Oh, sorry. You go, Cheryl. <laughs> oh, who was talking first? Was it Ray? Uh, Ria, oh, yeah. Hello. Ria, Ria hi. Hi. Um, I was just going to ask um, if you know that there's a baby in a burrow somewhere because you've checked mum. If you can't locate the burrow, can you just pin it on like a map and then alert you guys if you can't get back there or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. Obviously, it, it would be, um, you know, where is this? If it's very rural, it would be much more difficult, but yeah. I would always be happy to go and put a camera up. I've got heaps of cameras out in the field. Do they stray far from their burrows, the, the parents? So when mum has a joey that's at foot, they don't stray too far. So she does stash them from time to time. So she needs to go and feed and she leaves a little one in there. Mm -hmm. um, I have not found that they stray very far. So there would be a burrow nearby. The problem, though, is that if you drive rural, these burrows can be just on the other side of the fence and then it's private property. So mm -hmm. the, you would have to approach the farmer to say, look, I suspect something could I have access and the answer would probably be no so that's your option and if if the burrow is on the side of the road then it makes it a little bit easier okay thank you definitely don't go onto private property without permission cool thanks